uh, Mike from School Studio, and welcome to the first video in a series that was suggested by a good buddy of mine called the Fundamental Series. Um, so what this is about is basically just going through, not really painting tutorials, but just what to be aware of when painting, what makes good equipment, what doesn't make good equipment, what's good practice, um, and goals to, to reach to try and improve. Because um, that's what we're trying to do as painters, we're always trying to improve. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a bad painter. Uh, there's no such thing as a great painter. It's just the difference is knowledge and finding your style. Once you found your style, it, it's it becomes a completely different ball game. Uh, painting, you know, you might think, oh no, I'm not as good as that person, or that person's better than me, or that person's worse than me. But no, that person has either found their style and gone with it, uh, and has the knowledge to carry on, or if the person doesn't consider those as a good painter, they just haven't found their style yet. Um, and your style can be anything from uh, clean cut edge highlighting, um, to stark blending, bright colours, uh, dark and gritty, like mine. Mine tend to be quite dark, I quite like harsh shadows and grit and rust and dirt. Uh, I quite like mine to be quite realistic um, in colours. Um, so that's just my way of doing things. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm a great painter. I, I like to think I'm an okay painter, um, and people are happy with my work. Um, so that, that's what means it to me. But if you think to yourself, oh no, I'm not a good painter, I can't do this, I can't do that. It's just knowledge, it's just learning. It's an, painting is an acquired talent. You're not born with it. It comes from practice and failure and making mistakes and redoing it until you don't make mistakes. Um, you know, I, you know, I can do be working on commission work, and I still make mistakes. I've had to, you know, I've shown the clients. I say, "Sorry, I'm really messed up here. Uh, I will repaint it." You know, that happens. That happens all the time. People make mistakes uh, in painting as well as everyday life. Um, so it's just having the knowledge to learn from those mistakes and carry on, and then keep reaching for what style you you go for. So my first bit of advice, I'm just gonna. It's just we are the basis of this one is actually I'm going to be talking about brushes, but I just want to sort of build a bit of background. Um, and, and what to look for when you're starting miniature painting. Um, and I would say that it's important to not compare to anyone else. And that's an old adage, is it, you know, comparison leads to failure. Um, because, you know, it's the, sorry, compa uh, comparison is the killer of passion. Um, because you're never gonna be as good as the person next to you, or you're never gonna see it. You know, you might not like your work. A lot of artists, a lot of creatives, don't like their own work. Um, but you know the old age as long as the client is happy that's what really matters um finish not perfect uh is is another saying used i would also say don't look at other miniatures for inspiration um if i'm working with a client um and they go oh I would, how do you want your your miniatures to look have you thought about a scheme i say oh well i really like these miniatures or these painters i said don't look at miniatures um look at artwork look at what inspires you and how you want them to look artwork inspires me you know if i'm looking at a job i want to see some artwork and get a feel for it and get a theme for it and know you know if i'm painting miniatures that are going into battle i want to know i want to know what they look like when they're in battle i don't want to look at what someone else is painting them because i'm not a photocopier i can't produce the same work because i don't know their technique their style the paints they've used the amount of water they use to dilate i have my own way of doing things um we can try and match colors, if I know what colors they've used, but even that may be tricky. So my advice is, when you're starting an army and you're a bit worried about making mistakes or wanting to get some inspiration or what colors to go for and you're a bit lost, find some artwork of your army. There's thousands of artwork from Jet Games Workshop, I mean, but from others as well. But if you're doing military stuff, look at um, military artwork or military photographs don't look at other miniatures get inspiration from realism from artwork from thing depictions of your army that would be the, my first bit of advice uh, i find that really useful um, and i find that gets my creativity going because i want to try and emulate what i see in the artwork um, you won't get it because obviously it's a different format one is 2d one is 3d so you have to work differently to get the same effect but the idea and the theme is there um, so that's my first bit of advice my second bit of advice is choose brushes that suit you. Um, so I have several different brushes. Uh, 
several different types as well. I've got from high end to low end to absolute rubbish because they all serve a purpose. If I'm buying cheap synthetic brushes, they serve a purpose, which is either to use as for washes, use for dry brushing, use for layering, because I don't, if I'm doing just a, a flat layer or something, I don't need a neat brush, I just need a brush. So cheap synthetic brushes get the job done. Um, and if you feel like, oh, I keep ruining them, don't worry, I ruin brushes all the time. I've ruined some high-end brushes, which I'll show you in a minute, because I'm a bit of a brush killer. Uh, and yes, there, which I'll, I'll do another video, oh, well, actually, no, I'll probably do it in this one, about the basics of caring for your brush. Um, from my point of view and where I make mistakes um, but they're also uh, brush conditioners um, brush soap for cleaning um, and there's also another few few tricks you can do um, but essentially look after the brushes don't don't be like me um, you know I go through several brushes <laughs> uh, don't be like me look after your brushes um, look after your equipment look after your paints um, and the results will come back tenfold so the first thing I'm going to start with, I'm going to show you a high-end brush first. So these are my Broken Toad Mark III. Um, these are Kalinsky Sable, which is usually top of the range. Obviously, you get some imitators that say they're Kalinsky Sable and they're not. Um, so just a bit of anatomy of the brush, if I can get the protector off. Try and keep these. I always lose these. These are really useful. So if you look at the brush, you've got the point here, the belly, here, and then what's called the ferrum, where the brush meets the metal. Now the, the ferrum is usually clamped around the bottom and it's, it will be mechanically squeezed, or by hand by some, for some, to grip all the uh, um, bristles uh, and then keep them nice and tight. Um, and then obviously the handle. And there are the different types of handle. This is called a round handle, um, but you also have a triangle handle like here these are green stuff world brushes and these are meant to be held almost like that i don't mind them but i'm i'm very much one where i hold it almost near to the to the ferrum the, the the metal section um i very rarely hold it like that i don't feel i have enough control so green stuff world make very good brushes i'm just not i just don't really use the triangle hold for what it's meant for i'm really sorry about my hands they're filthy i've been um painting all day um uh, i'm not i'm not like not washing or anything like that um, so yeah, uh, and then obviously that's the triangle handle. You might find some are thinner than others. So if you look at the Windsor & Newton, um, you know, they're, they're, they're different shapes. One, the, the Broken Toad is quite thick, um, whereas the um, Windsor & Newton will go down and thin towards the bottom because this is the bit you'll, you usually grip is the thicker bit. So again, this is fundamental. This is the basics of the basics. So when you're gripping a paintbrush, I'm left-handed, what you want to do is grip it between here so you're having the thumb and then the two fingers next to it. So that when you're painting, you've got a nice grip. You can also move the brush itself. So if I'm painting something, I always want to keep it in the same direction and go all the way along. So that's how I would grip a brush. Um, people have their own techniques. Some people will put it between their fingers uh, and it just depends on your style. But for the basis, if you're learning to paint, just get used to gripping it it's a lot thinner than a pen so it's like holding a pen or a pencil but it's a lot thinner um, but you also have a lot more maneuverability um, so if you want to see what a brush looks like when it's screwed I'll try and get this one to focus there so as you can see there's paint all the ferrum it's all clogged into the brushes um, and this was me wrecking a brush before I, I started looking after them or at least trying to so why that happens is, is when you're when you're painting if you let paint dip into here into the ferrum it will solidify and it will cause the brushes the bristles to to splay basically um, and they will never get back to a fine point this one will never get back to a fine point unless i clean it almost every day um, so what what the trick is is to have a mixing brush against your painting brush so i'll just take a um, here's one of my synthetics. Yeah, so here's one of my synthetic brushes. It's a bit rough around the edges. Um, and let's say I wanted to use something for with my broken toad brushes. There we go. Um, I would get my paint, put it on my palette, and mix with this brush. Why? Because chances are it's going to go all the way up the thing while I'm mixing and into the ferrum. Once it's mixed, then I'll bring out the clean brush and I will just apply it 
So you're looking to get it. You never want to go past about here any further and it will start to seep very slowly into here. So when you're picking up paint, get it into the belly because that's what will hold the paint and it will flow down to the tip. You know, a brush, the, the belly is so important, much more important than the point uh, in some respect because you very rarely use the, the real point of it. You very rarely use this unless you're doing some real fine detail. Um, most of the time you'll be using the top end to do your layering, to do your blending um, and then you'll be using the belly here to do your edge highlighting like over the nail this is the motion you'd be looking for just straight across really thin and careful um, so that's that's the basic anatomy of the brush um, looking after your brushes um, I say make sure that you have a mixing brush for your bleed neck you have a mixing brush uh, on your for your mixing on your palette um, or thinning paints down and then you bring out the clean brush to apply the paint to the miniature it's just it's good standard brush care um, never leave them brushed down in water. Why? Because the pressure on the bristles will cause them to splay and any paint particles will then go up. Um, your best bet, believe it or not, is once they've been washed, is to hang them upside down because that will keep any water or moisture from going back into the ferrum. I don't do it because I don't have the setup to do that. I mean, I do, well, maybe not the patience to do that. Uh, I just make sure I, I wash them and I dry them thoroughly after each use. Um, I'd say there are several um, cleaners out there. Uh, Creature Caster do a very good one. Uh, then you've got the Masters uh, brush soap and you've got um, Broken Toad soap con uh, brush conditioner. All very good, all do similar jobs, uh, which is essentially to break down the paint particles in the brush, uh, and allow you to get rid of it and, and bring it back to a fine point. Because yes, the point is important, but basically what it means is that when you apply the paint, your bristles won't be splaying out and that's the, that's the point of it, that's the, that's the main the reason for it. Um, if you're looking at cost, it depends how passionate you are about painting. If you are a casual painter that just wants to get miniatures on the table, um, then stick with synthetic. There's nothing wrong with synthet synthetic brushes. They do exactly the same job, they just may not last as long and haven't been put together with the same care as, say, Solinsky. Uh, Kalinsky Sable. Uh, Kalinsky Sable brushes are usually handmade um, and it's they're actually from they're animal hair rather than synthetic. Um, but you can get some very good synthetic brushes. Um, Amazon do some really good ones just for, for like 20 quid. You can get 15 brushes. I used them at my beginner course um, and they were really good. Um, in fact, I, I bought, a pack, bought a pack myself. Um, but if you want to try uh, going up market a bit uh, and maybe getting some clinics they do. I would recommend Broken Toad every time actually. Uh, I would, how the hell did you get in there? Um, I will do a proper review, but I've been using these for about two weeks now and I've tried most other Kalinske Sables. Um, so my recommendations would be Broken Toad, uh, Creature Caster or Monument Games. They do some very good ones. Uh, Windsor and Newton are still I think their production has gone slightly downhill um, for the price they charge, um, but they still make very good brushes. Or um, Artis Opus, um, which are produced by a part of company of Siege Studios um, and Element Games. Um, they are quite pricey, some would say overpriced. Um, whereas this, these cost me, if I, when I got the isolation deal, I got for 60 quid, I got the soap, the set of four brushes, um, which are all the ones you really need to do a single, you know, most of the miniature work you need. I wouldn't use these for washes um, or any dry brush or anything like that. That's not what they're built for. Um, but, you know, just uh, be aware of pricing, how much you're going to use them and make sure you look after them, especially if you've spent a lot of money on them. Um, but yeah, so that's essentially the, the end. What I'm trying to do is just, is just go over the real basics, so starting with one of the most important things, which is brushes. Um, you know, you, sh you can't paint miniatures without brushes. Um, you can't paint it without paint, but I'll save that for another video. But yeah, I just wanted to go through a bit of the anatomy of brush, looking after the brush. Um, and then what I'll try and do is it going into more, in another video, basic brush techniques. Um, there are hundreds, there's hundreds of different styles, um, but I will just show you the very, very basics um, that, all miniature painters will start with. 
so yeah i hope this has been slightly useful so it's the first one if you don't if you don't like it let me know um or if you think i can add more to it or change it um but yeah so this is the first part of the fundamental series um and the next one i'll be covering paint uh, looking at different types of paint explaining what the different types of paint are um and we'll go from there so uh yeah uh, i've been mike from squirrel studio thank you so much for watching um feel free to subscribe uh, it would be really appreciated and if you liked the video give it a like uh, take care and i will speak to you soon bye bye